Now that I've told you the timeline from 1965 to 2021, I think you can figure out the answer to the question. Why did Pope Francis restrict the Latin Mass? And the answer is written right here. Quote, 56 years and Vatican II as a council has not been accepted. It's still very unpopular. So if you think of this as an epic of 100 years, we are on year 56. And they're losing. The demographics are down for baptisms, marriages, ordinations, nuns, confirmations. Just pick anyone. Just throw a dart at any Catholic metric and they're all down. In the excitement and the growth and the controversy is swinging to the position of Archbishop Lefebvre in 1970, which is the old Latin mass cannot be abolished. And all the bishops shook their fists and shook their croziers and says, yes, it is. Stop saying it. He said, no. And then in 2007, Benedict says, it's not been abolished, guys. And so what happened last week was as close as you can get to abolishing the Latin Mass. Francis didn't abolish the Latin Mass. I personally believe that the Holy Spirit has prevented any pope or bishop since 1970 to say Latin Mass is abolished because it's never happened. It's never been abolished. But what they're going to do now is restrict it. A bunch of hoops with fire on them that priests are going to jump through and communities, lay people are going to have to jump through. And in a way, it's a reset to 1970. I know that's discouraging and it's sad to hear. It's a reset to 50 years ago. But look how much bigger it is. In 1970, just think of America. How many traditional Latin masses were in every city? Zero. Barely any. New Orleans had one that went all the way through the 70s, but in the other diocese, there weren't Latin masses that continued. Very rare. Now, just about every major city and just about every, of the, every one of the 50 states has a Latin mass in it. People are writing books about it. Missiles are being reprinted. They're being sold out. Try to buy a Father Lassant's missile right now. You can't. They're sold out. Here's one of mine right here. Everybody wants them. It's growing. It's the win. And Francis is punishing those people. Not bloggers, not YouTubers. He's punishing this group of people because... We are 56 years into this 100-year epic, and they are losing. And we all feel, we all felt last year. If you've been a tra- I've been going to traditional Latin Mass for 11 years. I, all of us felt it last year. We felt it tip. Mm. Where a Mass that usually, a, a, a church that has the Latin Mass that usually has 200 on a Sunday is getting 800 on a Sunday, a thousand on a Sunday. My parish hit 2000 on a Sunday. I can remember going there when we met in the cafeteria and there were maybe 150, probably a hundred people going to the Latin mass. Now, 2000 in an 11 year span. Just do the math and go exponential and then add in birth rates and procreation of babies and just map that out over the next 50 years. And there's your answer. So this restriction is meant to restrict that growth because, as I said, there are three groups fighting for the shape of Catholicism in the next 50 years. Your modernist progressives, your conservatives, and your traditionalists. Francis... What he's doing is, is he's taking that big chunk of conservatives who previously were like JP2, JP2, um, or word on fire, word on fire. And what Francis is doing is he's pushing everyone to be 
James Martin, modernist, or Lefebvre traditional. That's really what 20, 2018, 2019, 2020, and now into 2021, when everyone's hearing about this restriction, what he's doing is, is he's now pushing on that middle and it's pushing people out on the sides. Progressive modernist, traditionalist. And we're going to win. We're going to win. I got no doubt about it. Look who has the ordination numbers. Look who has the marriage numbers. And then most importantly, look who has the birth rate numbers. We do. I got eight kids. How many kids y'all got? Look at the numbers. Map that out. 20 years, 30 years, 50 years. Then map it out 100 years. It's a no-brainer. This restriction is bad. It's a reset. I'm not happy about it, but it's a blip. And the way God works is, you know, Pharaoh chases Moses and the people out to the Red Sea. They get to the Red Sea. Oh no, Pharaoh's going to kill us. There's a sea right here. We're all going to die. Moses raises the staff. The sea parts. The Israelites go through with Moses. The Pharaoh and the Egyptians come after him and the water comes down. They're gone. They're drowned. So this is just really kind of a pushing us up to the Red Sea. It's going to open. 